There's a YouTube show full of fun facts you need to know. Carl brings a bell and the members show to the GMP morning show. Featured guests will come and they will blow your mind. The audience will do so in kind. The little vanity mixed with some insanity on the morning show with GMP. Manson here from expatsportugal.com with the Good Morning Portugal show live stream and the podcast. Don't forget the podcast. How are you this morning? I'm going to pause. Not just a cursory. All right. How are you doing? Uh, none of that. Tudo bem, amigo. How are you? I'm going to look into the camera. Check, please. How are you doing this morning? <laughs> I can tell. So just take a moment. It's Feel Good Friday. Jenny B, the magical, the mystical Jenny B. <laughs> Oh, will be with us uh, at around nine o'clock. And I am seriously interested in how you're doing this morning. If you're not feeling the May West, stick around. Uh, maybe rate yourself out of 10 in terms of well-being and vigor. And uh, well-being, yes, vigor. And your just general state of happiness. How you doing? And stuff. It's easy to just not check sometimes, isn't it? And just go about your business. And before you know it, decades have passed. <laughs> no, uh, let's have a look. Let's see how we're doing, how we're really doing this morning. And maybe rate it out of 10. And then we'll check again at the end of the show. It's a scientific experiment. It's not all woolly and hippy, you know, this well-being stuff. It can be tangible. Uh, let's, so let's measure it this morning. Who doesn't like to measure it first thing in the morning? Uh, great, It's great to be here. Uh, I have so much to share with you uh, this morning. Um, grateful thanks to uh, Connie and to Hank, who joined us for the social uh, webinar. The first Thursday of every month is a little bit more informal and social. People are chucking questions in hundreds of them, hundreds of comments and questions last night ar around uh, Connie and Hank's journey. Their, their love affair with Portugal, and now they're finally here joining us, uh, joined us last night and talked about it. And we had such a lovely call uh, with them. So thank you very, very much. The Stalikas, the Stalikas. You say Stalika, I say Stalika. Let's go and live in Portugal, which is what they've done. And so it was such a lovely night, actually. Um, and thank you to those of you who, who gave uh, your thanks and uh, acknowledgement and appreciation for the expats Portugal community last night. There we were um, in the evening. Um, and here we are in the morning. And uh, yeah, out of 10 then, your well-being. How are you feeling? How are you feeling this morning? Tudo bem? Como vai? Uh, how's it going? How's it hanging? Um, out of 10 this morning. And let's check again at the end of the show. Now, uh, in, in line with all of this, this isn't just thrown to Well, it is thrown together, but in a kind of loving and careful way. You know, in the way that you might hastily pack a bag for the weekend. That's what it's like. It's like hastily packing a bag for a weekend that you're really looking forward to. You know, those sorts of weekends. Yes, you do. You remember, don't you? And um, you're thinking to yourself, I didn't know I was going to be going away this weekend. But yes, we're going away this weekend. Let's pack a bag. I'm going to need that. I'm going to need the condoms and the hotel compound. Whatever it is, you put it in your backpack when you go away on one of those weekends. That's what the show's like this morning. Throwing things into the bag of life. Um, the backpack of life that we're going to need. Um, so, yes, it does come together in the most magical and mystical way, not unlike Jenny B. And um, but loving, not but, and lovingly so. So in that potpourri, in that smorgasbord, in that pick a pow uh, of a show that we have for you today. Um, thank Hank. Done that, haven't we? Thank you, Hank and Connie. Um, Coach Turner's here with a video a little bit different this morning, and he's talking about technique. It ain't what you do. It's the way that you do it. And that's what gets results, folks. And that's going to be a theme that we're going to continue to explore this morning. Oh, yeah, a top-level theme of the show. You know the thing, the clickbait. <laughs> yes, guilty as charged sometimes. Adding value as an expat. Puh, what? How to fit in and make a difference? Well, yeah, whatever. You know, those sort of reactions um, to some of the show titles. Well, I'm serious this morning. Um, I think there's a sweet spot, is there not? And Jenny is here to discuss it later on. And so are you, actually. Um, lurkers may want to show themselves and t tell, tell us what they feel about this. What is that sweet spot? Whereas an expat, you're coming in as a foreigner, as an immigrant to the new country. 
And you want to fit in. You want to you want to be respectful, and you want to show due deference and and respect and contribution um, to those making you feel welcome in the country. And you want to make an impact and a bit of a difference as well. Who doesn't as a human being? And there's a fine balance to be struck. So we'll talk about that throughout the show. And I hope uh, you will give your comments and thoughts about that as well. So that's that's the headline, if you like, the headline theme. Uh, we will show you the Jekyll and Hyde nature of the modest village of Salio de Porto, not unlike many other villages and towns in Portugal. Somewhat sleepy sometimes and not in a bad way, just relaxed and easy going. Then comes the Festa weekend. <laughs> and a transformation takes place. And uh, we'll see this because uh, Bill very kindly sent in a video. Of, Can you believe this is Celia de Porto? Um, actually, the, the photo we needed was probably the one with nothing in the streets. Just normal day. Then the concessions and the truck started to appear. And then last night, a bit of footage from Celia de Porto. The partying continues over the weekend. If you've got something like that happening near where to you are, near where to you are, near where you are, near to you, then please maybe send in a photo. We'll do that next week. It's really nice to be able to send... Uh, in, or it's, it's nice for me if you do send in uh, your pictures and videos of your town and how it's preparing and then how it's partying. Um, so do send us any information you've got. Andy, I might still be in the uh, UK at the moment. Um, so um, the events posting hasn't been what well, well, um, it's not a complaint, by the way. Um, one of your amazing uh, events that you showcased for us was the Expo Fakik. I think that's what it's called um, in um, Cantoneda. And uh, I've got a few pictures from Cantoneda. Where's the rest of them? I thought, I, I thought, I, oh, yes, I have got lots of pictures from Canton Media. What's this one, though? I don't recognize this one. Oh, yes, I do. That's from, that's from Clive. We're going to the Algarve as well this morning. Um, back to Cascais, popping in at the Algarve, going to Canton Media, going to Celia de Porto, uh, joining Jenny wherever she is this morning in central Portugal, and representing wherever you are, of course. We're popping into your town virtually this morning. What's the weather like? What's going on this weekend? Let's talk about that, too. And um, Philomena has, yes, sent in those lovely pictures of the of the uh, event that uh, Andy mentioned some time ago. Pop to the Algarve. Thanks to Clive for a wonderful little video uh, that C Capricorn Chris is going to really enjoy and is also going to get me a strike on YouTube. I'll have to mute that later, uh, but I'll let you enjoy it this morning. And Jenny B, of course. Can expats add value or how? They, of course they can, but how do they go about that? That's all coming up. Um, and we're already eight minutes into the show. We've not said hello to anybody. I do apologize. Pete's in, I can see. Oh, Andy, who I mentioned, I can see. You back yet, yeah, Andy? We'll find out in just a minute. Pam as well. James, of course. Julian Bradley. Julian Bradley. A new name, I believe. I don't think we've seen you before, have we, Julian? Hello from Australia. Good morning to you. Jim White is in as well. Morning, Jim. Your neighbors were on the, on the webinar last night, and they were fantastic. I had quite a lot of bants with that old Hank. He's quite a character. Um, but still asleep, of course. Say what you want about Hanky still asleep this morning. Uh, Victoria, Laura P. Laura, lovely to speak to you as well, Cindy B. And Coach Turner's in, uh, representing with a video this morning. And Daddy McGrady. Did someone call him Daddy McGrady? Yes, Pete called him Daddy McGrady. Daddy McGrady sounds like um, a reggae star, doesn't he, of the 80s. Daddy McGrady. <laughs> yes. Can you toast? And um, not bread, but are you? can you do a bit of toasting? For our upcoming Gumper gig, got to, we've got to have a Gumper gathering, haven't we? Uh, the old gif of disco at, at some point, we'll do that. And maybe we'll have Daddy McGrady um, spitting a few rhymes and lyrics uh, for Pundi Stage, uh, maybe. I don't know. Let's, let's find out. Deagle also in. Bon dia, Carl and Gumpers then. Day three of blue skies in Belfast. A fresh eight degrees, overnight 18 degrees today. But, some, but come Sunday, um, into the wee 20s there. Wee 20s. Uh, good for you, uh, Bon dia, Algria. 21 degrees and cloudy here in central Portugal at quarter to eight in the morning. Um, it is the 166 year anniversary, old, oh, where are we going, of the Great Stink. And the pipes in London haven't been repaired since their inception. Hose pipe burn. Uh, not quite sure what you're talking about there, Pete. Um, I wonder if you could elaborate on that. Is it 166 years? Is there a celebration of Victorian plumbing? In London, maybe that's it. As a history teacher, I suspect you have talked a lot of sewage in your time. Hey, see what I did there? Um, but what is that? <laughs> no, I, I won the history prize myself as a pupil. Uh, we're on the same page there, Pete. But what is this sewage and um, plumbing related, pipe related thing you speak of here? Inception, like the, the movie comes to mind, doesn't it? And all the uh, sewage pipes in Inception being bent at 90 degree angles. Shudder to think what might happen if that truly happened in real life. 
but who says it doesn't in a parallel universe kind of way? Anyway, thank you, Pete, for that. Uh, bon dia, Gumpers. A feliz sexta todos. Como va? Um, feliz sexta, of course. Um, yeah, no, I'm not going to say it. I know you think I'm going to say it, but I'm not going to say it. You can say it to yourself in your head. And if you think to you that you don't have voices um, in your head and you, you don't have these conversations with yourself, that is what's going on now while you're thinking to yourself, I don't have conversations in my head. I don't know what Carl's talking about. I don't talk to myself. That's it. That's it right there. Will Rogers quote of the day. Ah, I haven't got my poetry book. If Mrs. M is does happen to be listening, although she's having a bit of a kirtan session in the kitchen, I noticed this morning, and singing her... Uh, well, chanting, she's chanting and burning a Naga Champa joystick in the kitchen. Probably not listening to me this morning, to be fair. But if you are, can I have my Fernanda Bozoa poetry book? I have bought a Portuguese poetry book and it's beautiful, beautifully made. Uh, and I want to share some Pessoa with you at some point. Maybe not this morning. We've got so much to squeeze in this morning. And I need help from our Portuguese friends to tell me where to start. Uh, with with the great Fernando. Um, so Will Rogers quote, let's get straight into this. This country has come to feel the same when Congress is in session as when the baby gets hold of a hammer. I don't know if that's how Will Rogers talks, but I need to do some sort of American accent on that. Uh, or it could be a vocal fry porto sort of thing. Oh, this country has come to feel the same when Congress is in session as when a baby gets hold of a hammer. Um, I hope I did that some sort of justice and got the point across. And yes, Congress, what are you like? Nancy Pelosi, what are you doing? Um, dad joke warning. Ah, don't, don't put that on the screen yet. Not without a little bit of a warning. Um, I think before we go to the dad jokes, actually, uh, we should hear from uh, the coach Turner this morning. Uh, along the lines of it ain't what you do, it's the way that you do it. And that's what gets results. Well done, everybody. Um, so Coach Turner, with a little message for you uh, in lieu in lieu of a written message, here's Coach Turner uh, with a little, bit of, um, a little bit of insight on technique. So in spite of having a bad hair day today, I thought we'd change up God Squad tip of the day uh, by doing a, a little video. And given that we're in the middle of our major championships, uh, I thought I'd talk very briefly about coaches because we all disagree about what the best way forward is for our athletes, which is why different coaches produce different results, I guess. But one thing we all agree on is that technique is vital for keeping injury away for elite athletes. But it can also be really useful for keeping injury away for the rest of us. So whatever you want to do is form in form of exercise, try and learn the right technique. It's all out there on the internet, you can find it. Learn the right technique, try to repeat and repeat and repeat the right technique, whatever you're doing, whether it's swimming, cycling, walking, running, whatever. Do the right technique, you'll keep injuries away and you'll be able to exercise more without even feeling it. So that's my tip of the day. We'll be back to normal service tomorrow, or rather Monday, because it's Friday today, yesterday, and now I'm getting confused. See you soon. Bye. Very nice uh, T-shirt with integral checked arms there. Yeah, whose idea was that? Thank you very much for that, James. <laughs> do you remember? I saw that just in time, didn't I? I'm mean, going to have to do that again. Yes, if you send a video in, um, in portrait, so yes, in portrait style like that, I will attempt, as uh, James has suggested there, to do the arms and the hands. It'll be my great pleasure to improvise in that way. Anything else you want me to do, James, while we're about it? Uh, where did we get to? Yeah, so technique, uh, bad hair day. What's he talking about? I mean, he needs to give us some tips on having uh, on how to have a nice, lustrous, and full barnet like that, doesn't he? I mean, honestly, look. You know, he, we could do with, it's not a bad hair day. I mean, it was blown about in the wind, but there was a lot of it, I have to say. So thank you very much for that. And when I first heard that, I was thinking to myself, hmm, as I do, extrapolate. I was extrapolating while listening to, to um, <laughs> who doesn't, yeah. Um, I, was, I was extrapolating the idea of technique. It applies to life, doesn't it? Life technique, what, how we do it, what we do do, what we don't do, what we choose to incorporate that we're not doing at the moment you know it's not just on track and field is it it is life itself where technique is important and we of course we have life coaches now never had that when i was a boy and we never had djs like the one i'm going to show you either we had the likes of savile and jonathan king and uh 
I, I'm actually I'm not going to say another one because it puts puts people in a certain light when I, if I keep making a list like that. But you know what I mean? Uh, British DJs were pretty grim, weren't they? As it turned, a lot of them, as it turns out, from the 1970s. Got an absolutely wonderful DJ who I'd wished I was around when I was a lad. Anyway, come back to that. And Clive, thank you very much for sending that to me, uh, that lovely little video. And your defence of the Algarve which perhaps we should go to now. Uh, Laura P, good weather in the Algarve, fresh in the morning, very warm during the day with beautiful wind uh, that helps cope with it. Who doesn't like a bit of beautiful wind first thing in the morning? I had to say that one. Um, morning people from Lee McGrady. So let's stay with the Algarve for a moment. Oh, and um, Victoria's balcony tomato plants. Forgot about those. We've got Wiley's boulders and um, we've got um, Victoria's tomatoes uh, to show you this morning. Is that the same picture twice there? Oh, no, there's a cat in the second one. Thank you very much. Um, and I think cats like to nuzzle up against the fragrant leaves of a tomato plant. OK, so thank you very much. Is that Derby or Dublin in that particular picture there? I will show those as well. And, and um, uh, Clive, Clive, let me just go to Clive's message to me. Um, and, and I'll show you the picture. Well, you don't need to see me looking down trying to find the picture. You can be looking at the picture whilst I find the message that goes with it. Here it is. Here's the Algarve. Um, and um, I, I think people get peed off with me when I talk about the Algarve and just take take the mickey a little bit about it. Um, I don't know what the American equivalent of taking the mickey is. Uh, and I, I, no offence to anyone called Mickey or if that is something terrible in America. Um, but thanks, Carl, for sharing the video and the pics from the Arte Do you remember that? That great big pile of sweetness uh, surrounded by ladies with very satisfied grins on their faces um, because they had created the largest Dom Rodrigo, no euphemism intended there, 125.4 kilos of Dom Rodrigo, which I, I, suspe I, I suspect they promptly chowed down. Anyway... Clive thanked me for the pictures. Now, I thanked him for the pictures and I showed them and he thanked me for sharing them. Um, the first pic of the montage was made of his pics from the first couple of nights at the Arte dos Festival, which is behind us now. You can look forward to it again uh, for next year. And Marisa was fantastic on Sunday. So they had Marisa there. Marisa was also at the, uh, the other event that I um, want to show you some pictures from, from Philomena. And Marisa, I have a video as well. Another thing that's going to get me struck off, <clears throat> well, are threatened on YouTube for playing music, but I'm willing to take the risk because Marisa is such a star. What an amazing woman she is. And we have her, a meeting and greeting with a few of her fans before the show and then taking to the stage. And I want, it's, it is spine-tingling stuff, which I'll share with you after Jenny's here um, this morning. But back to the Algarve and this picture, about which... Uh, <laughs> Clive says, unlike some of the built-up beach places in central Algarve, which are closer to the image you often convey on the show. Um, yeah, and I'm sorry for that. Because I've, I've also got a, a video of Burgal to put the record straight as well this morning. Uh, the beach to the left of Lagos is called Maya Praia. And that's at half a beach and runs for four kilometers down towards Alvor without any development along it. I'm loving Lagos life. Have you moved there for, for good and proper for good, Clive? I didn't know that. I thought you were a bit like Chris and you're back and forth. Um, and also a video to share then. So that's a lovely a lovely shot there. I think we're probably seeing Lagos to the right, aren't we? And it becomes less and less developed as it makes its way to Alvor for a good four kilometers. So let me apologize and put the record straight. When I'm having a little bit of banter with Frank and, and just pushing it a little bit about the Algarve, I, I love the Algarve, don't get me wrong, I really do. And it has so much to commend it. And it is, you know, it's not just um, Guinness and, and fish and chips and egg and bacon. Um, there I go again. There I go again. And I want to show you now, and part of it is jealousy and bitterness, of course, because as I was, as I was saying, I had to grow up with some, well, when, when I was a lad, here we go, it always, it's always going to be a bit <laughs> sad or boring, isn't it, when someone starts a, a sentence with when I was a lad. But DJs really did have faces for radio, didn't they? And some people say that about me. You, I know who you are, you rascals. And now compare and contrast with the modern day uh, where DJs take a lot more care about their appearance, like this young lady here, who I believe is Natasha Diggs, uh, where uh, Clive went uh, last night that would ha would have been much more up your strasse than your local rogue sound invaders. Clive feeling my pain for the <laughs> that was going on last week uh, here. Apparently there's um, a techno night every Saturday night in San Martino de Porto on the beach, if you're into that sort of thing. This was a trancey dubstep nasty step thing that was going on. But it did get better last weekend, I have to say. And I know by the time... <clears throat> Excuse me. By the time it was... <coughs> oh, my God.
Hmm? Where's me doctor, Bayard? I need to tackle a doctor. Oh, my goodness. I don't know where, where that came from and what that was. Um, but he passed pain about last weekend. That's what it was. Um, yeah, uh, by the time Sunday came, I was, I was missing the music that had been vibrating the windows for the last three days. Anyway, um, here is, uh, it, we go now to the Algar, thanks to Clive. And uh, Duna Beach Club in Lagos held their first Duna Beach Sunset event with American DJ producer Natasha Diggs. Here she is. A night of stonking funky house. It often goes together, doesn't it? The funky house and a bit of stonkiness uh, overlooking the beach, including this old chestnut, which was my tune of the day. And I sincerely hope Chris Capricorn 12 is watching this because you're going to love this. <laughs> Tune of the night there for Clive. You know how to love me. Disco fired there, of course. Um, uh, by, that's a Phyllis Hyman track, isn't it? Uh, you know how to love me. Beautiful. Thank you very much, Clive. I think we've set the record straight somewhat uh, with the Algarve, apart from this video of Burgaon, which uh, uh, the coach Turner uh, suggested uh, we show yesterday. Didn't get around to it yesterday, but here it is now. Check out beautiful Burgaon, which, of course, Gilda was talking about uh, lovingly uh, last only this week on Monday. There you go, isn't that beautiful? Burgao and Tiago Zeffarino, the chef there at the Nautical Club. Check him out. Uh, people love his work, his culinary creations. Uh, Burgao, everybody, thank you, Coach Turner, for that. And just finally then, for now anyway, in the Algarve, tomato plants on the balcony. There's some to be proud of, right? Look at them. And um, they are tomato plants, aren't they, Victoria? Um, and, um, you know, six months later, not a single tomato, but they smell good. Um, and uh, there we go. We have Derby or Dublin there. Have a little sniff of the tomato. Tomato! That's, of course, what Victoria would be saying. Tomato plants on the balcony there. Have you got some basil with to go with those as well? Basil, where I'm from. Basil. Um, basil and tomatoes, though, I think, in the Algarve there. Thank you so much, Victoria. Good morning to you. Back to your comments and the chat. Though I'm not there, um, have you ever been <laughs> all here? <laughs> Andy, uh, I know him well enough to say that. Don't forget to check the What's On page for all this weekend's fun. Uh, we did have a little bit of a problem on the website yesterday. A bit of, bit of, a, bit of, a, bit of a threat from somewhere. Um, and I think it's all good now. If it's not, it's certainly being worked on over there on the website. Bear with. A um, few difficulties with expatsportugal.com in the last 24 hours. But bear with. Check it out. And, um, yeah, I think this should be being uh, should be back on the rails now. And so do check out the events that Andy is talking about there. Thanks again, Andy. Um, you wonderful rascal, you, and the wonderful uh, events listings that you keep putting up there for us. Um, thank you so much, mate. And I hope you're having a great time in the UK. Moreover, about transportation. If you buy a Red Espresso bus ticket well in advance, the price is really low. For example, when I go from Albufeira to Lisbon, she only pays five euros. Can you believe that? Five euros from the Algarve that we have been just showcasing to the capital. Five euros for that. Thank you for that. Uh, yes, sometimes the coach is faster than the train, depending on your availability of tracks and lines near you. Certainly the case here on the Silver Coast. Sometimes, well, it's, it's always quicker to go by coach than it is by train. Uh, but it's no, nonetheless very pleasant to go either way. And very good value here in Portugal. Brian's in. How's that ankle? Uh, bon dia, Gumpers. Looking nice and sunny for my first day back at work. Why does it work like that, I wonder? So you'll be limping into work then, Brian. And um, hola, bon dia. All you Portugal residencies, hope you all have a splendid weekend from your Bairada buddy. Yeah, good old Bairada buddy. That's a nice way of referring to him, isn't it? Reporting in from sunny Bournemouth in the... Uh, is it still the southeast? That, that would be. It's, it's kind of... The central southern coast, isn't it, Bournemouth uh, there? Anyone been to Bournemouth? Great place. Um, we were talking about the Tiers, uh, the Kashkaish, weren't we? The uh, the ladies that lunch of Kashkaish. You see a few purple and blue rinses in Bournemouth as well. I don't know if that's what Andy is sporting for his, his journey home. Okay, I think we got to go there with the dad jokes. Should we do dad jokes with Jenny B? Because um, she'll bring a German twist to the dad jokes. Uh, Farta, that... That in itself is a dad joke, isn't it? Given that the Germans call their dads Vater, 
we could have a lot of fun with that. But I'm going to give you a few uh, dad jokes now. I only just occurred to me. And if you and dad, daddy is farty, isn't it as well? Um, much to my amusement as a as a teenager learning German at school. Farty. <laughs> Munson, stop sniggering. I never, I never grew out of that habit, um, I have to say. So dad joke warnings then. Where is that dad joke warning? Um, don't worry, Jenny, just talking about farty and farter uh, here on the Good Morning Portugal show. <laughs> she's, not, she's not breaking a smile about that. Well, why would she? It, <laughs> the joke is wasted there, I think. Okay, okay. Where is that dad joke warning? I really need it. Now. Warning. Warning. But you have been warned before getting therapy, uh, says uh, James, and he is in the business of the therapy. I used to struggle with mental health issues. Now I enjoy every minute of them. <laughs> so true. So true. If you can't laugh at yourself, uh, you're not copying everybody else, I suppose would be one way of looking at it. Um, and uh, they call me Mellow Yellow, a DJ, dad joke, uh, the, the one we just heard. Uh, he, it's Pete's coming back at you with a response. Um, have you heard of the Californian Al Conspiracy Network? They're calling themselves the Cahoots. Very good, Peter. Thank you very much for that. There is a Illuminati joke around as well, isn't there? The um, the, those uh, the elite, the elite rubbery cheese people, the Illuminati, of course. And uh, Coach Turner, thank you for your video. Bon dia, Gump, as you say. Hope you all have a wonderful Friday. Jenny, be with us in a few minutes' time. <laughs> She'll be here soon. Cindy B's in. How you doing, Cindy? And Victoria's in as well. With she's working in the room. Is is uh, Victoria? Uh, I'm a ten. Okay. Uh, just so Jenny knows, and anyone who joined a little bit later, um, as you joined the show, I was asking how you were, and then I looked into your soul. And um, really, how are you? Not just a cursory. How are you really? Uh, Jenny's doing it as well. Take a take a moment. Take a breath and have a look. I think I, I'm already at nine or, uh, yeah, I'm getting close to 10 this morning. I, I wonder how you are. And we're going to measure again at the end of the show. And as I said before, and I'll say it again, who doesn't like a quick measurement first thing in the morning? So Deagle is a 10 uh, in health, happiness, and in life. Look at him with his wheel of life. Nice one. Uh, good to hear that. Eight out of 10 for Francis. Just a little tired. Fair enough. House alarm issues in the middle of the night. Aren't house alarms great? causing more problems for the owner than for, for anyone else, uh, uh, but good and happy. I mean, this is the world of security, isn't it? It actually causes more trouble for the people it's meant to protect than the, the people it's trying to protect you from. But anyway, probably still a good idea nonetheless. Eight out of ten for Francis, but good and happy to be here today. Uh, wow, that was a shocker. What was a shocker, Pete? Uh, went to that ice sea last weekend. It uh, was a shocker. Out of the three of us that went in, I was the only one who kept my trunks Wow, what sort of game is that where you lose your trunks, I wonder? Uh, when I check, when I notice, the answer answer is always the same. So checking is good, isn't it? Maybe some people check, though, James, because they don't want to know the answer. But for you, it's a fantastico. Uh, obrigado. Uh, so good, good check-in for James there. Um, 70 days, 69 sleeps till our third trip uh, in 2022 to Portugal. And two planned for 2023 already. Fantastic. Uh, pa Pamela, I'm going to show your boulder off now. Tony's boulders. Um, uh, we had Wiley's boulders yesterday uh, on, the sh on the screen on the show. And uh, when Pam saw that, she was reminded. Here's, here's Wiley's boulders. Uh, nothing in there for scale, but they were double human height, I believe. And then um, Pam saw those and thought to herself, well, okay, that reminds me of Guimarães. Look at that for a boulder with a, a man standing on it there. So lovely. you have lovely boulders, Pamela, if you don't mind me saying so. Uh, good morning to you in Alcabasa and good morning to you, Tony, who has mounted your boulder uh, there. Fantastic. Uh, Gimaraes, everybody. Let me commend that to you this morning. Oh, we've got those pictures of uh, the FACO, um, FACIC, no, Expo FACIC. Uh, did so everyone suddenly go, what? What did he just say? Uh, Expo FACIC in Cantaneda. I shall share that whole sequence from Philomena um, after Jenny B joins us at nine o'clock. Oh, which it is now. So... <laughs> Here she comes onto the screen, Jenny B from Central Portugal. How are you doing, Jenny B? There you I come. forgot now, my I bubbles, but I'm you so forgot, good. You, you forgot your bubbles. I was I was describing the show 
Jenny, as we, the way we put it together, it is thrown together, but very lovingly in the way that when you suddenly realize you're going away for the weekend, you grab a bag. Oh, I'm going to put my lucky pants in there, change your clothes, toothbrush. Woohoo! That's how we do the show. Um, so welcome. And But you've, you've forgotten your bubbles. And you're, are you in a different location this morning? Do I discern? Yes. Okay, what's going on? I do because uh, I need to take a deep breath. I spent a lot of time on the Mio hotline last week <laughs> <laughs> and still I don't have no internet. So oh. I managed uh, to go to a lovely, lovely friend that allowed me to be there and do the show so I can be Thank here you with friend. you guys. Okay. Yeah. Shout out to the yeah. friend who very kindly has stepped in then. Um, and Mio uh, uh, causing you a few. So it's not all about Mio. Um it's about your fiber that's failed by the sound of it in central Portugal. Well, good luck with that. I hope that is resolved sometime soon. I'm sure it'll be behind you and then you'll forget all about it. But whilst it's happening, you know, this is part of human life now, isn't it? To be connected to the internet. It's very interesting because it really uh, confronts you with exactly that topic. How much of your life is actually happening online or yeah. You need to go through all that. I mean, just just messaging and the whole stuff. I had to cancel so many appointments this week, and for the for the most emergency ones, I had to use my data, which is also bloody expensive in Portugal, oh, yeah. uh, on a on a mobile phone. And uh, yeah, I so if Mio is not fixing it, I'm gonna make a. A hate show about that next time when I'm when I'm here. I'm gonna tell them, I'm gonna tell them like there's many people that I see every month, and I tell them if ever you move here, don't go for them. <laughs> there, well, there, 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 there's another side of Jenny that we've not seen before. The the the, the hated on me. I think it's going to be sorted out soon. This is this is my experience of such things. It's like it feels so bad at the time, and it can be so frustrating if you're not constantly watching and noticing and acting, as James puts it. Um, and then when it's done, it's done. It's all forgotten about, and you know the the internet's coming back into the house, and you know you don't notice it. You, you, you forget the problems that you had. So I, I hope that occurs for you very soon. And thank you to your friend for letting you use your home uh, this morning, Jenny. What did you think about this? Um, I didn't give you a lot to for say in this, uh, and I, I hope you're okay with it. Um, but I thought you'd have something to add for sure about adding value as an expat and the sweet spot, how to fit in how to be respectful as a foreigner, as an immigrant, but also how to make your impact. Is that something you would like to talk about this morning? Do say yes. I love it. I really oh, love it. It tickled yes. me last night because exactly like you said, with us, you never know what you get and we never know what we get and we never know what's happening. So, But that's the beauty of it. And I think this is also something that our audience does appreciate. I just keep thinking, is there a light switch that I could turn on so there's actually other, more light? Other people have been thinking that as well, Jenny. You're not alone in that, but it's fine. It's fine. We can see you glowing, yeah. which is the main thing. Hello. <laughs> and um, <laughs> it's just that my face is in the focus today and not the background. So if you're okay with that, guys. <laughs> We're so okay with that. Don't you worry. Do you know, it was interesting when you said that because immediately it came to me, oh my God, fitting in has never been something that I've ever been good at. Um, but... <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, but to some extent, fitting in, particularly when you speak about moving into a different country, for yes. me, it's also a lot about common sense really and respecting one another in the sense of the culture and where you're going for example uh, we are in a catholic um, country so going out and about in like a, a belt rock and uh, just a bra uh, it might not be as um, okay scene as in other cultures where it's more or less normal yeah. to do that on a friday night people well people don't seem to mind it when i do that uh, when i go to the market in the mornings what did I'm you wear your man to the market, Carl? What is, what, did you just a belt rock? What is a belt rock? A belt rock. So the the, the uh, a belt skirt. Sorry. So these skirts well, they are skirt, actually okay. uh, just like a belt. 
but not longer than I have that. seen them. Disgusting. Yes, I know exactly what you mean. A lampshade. Well, usually felt... they could yes. look really nice if it would be the appropriate body shape that is wearing them, but usually it's not. <laughs> not me. Not me. Okay. Yeah, I, I get you. I, I'll stop it. I'll stop it. Fair enough. Yes. Oh, oh, so, yeah, you, okay, if so... you would at least shave your bum, then it would be fine. You know? Oh, stop it. <laughs> Oh, so people are trying to have breakfast here but okay i get it yeah uh, naked yes um the the beach if this uh, if this was the south of france uh, if, if our lovely beach here in saint martinio de porto was transposed uh, transformed to being part of south of france there would just be bikini bottoms it would be topless but we're in a country where a catholic country where there's a different set of codes in place um so yes i get that i get that and that's just one of the conventions and customs yeah, exactly you yeah. might observe yeah yeah. And and also sometimes you you meet people and that's all over the world. You know, that's not generalized. There's assholes in every country and in every culture. But yeah, sorry, the beaver. Oh, oh, uh, uh, oh, oh, uh, oh, oh, now, oh, well, you have too many buttons yes, gone yes. by now. <laughs> Just as I take a sip of water, so that could have ended very badly. Okay, you say that they're a disagreeable and um, people with other values than our own around wherever you go in the world, yes. I love your diplomatic approach to these things. <laughs> very good. Um, yeah, uh, they, they are everywhere in the world. Um, but often I find with foreigners uh, in, a, in a different country, and uh, I think we both lived in, in several, but... Uh, even people who do have immigrated might have had experience in other countries too. And often they're just trying to replace their old life in a different country. Oh, so yes. all the all the values that you've had in your old uh, suburban little um, cottage life, let's say, you just move the same thing to a mountaintop in Portugal yes. and uh, expect the same services, expect the same values. I remember I had this conversation or I heard this conversation. I think I think it was an American couple and a Norwegian couple, but it doesn't matter. They were building a house here and they were just saying, and if you're not there, they're doing what they want. You know, they're just not doing it the way I want it. And I'm like, we're in a Southern European country. You wouldn't want to work between one and four o'clock. It's super hot. But if there's, <laughs> let's say, clients who don't know all about that and, and have in relation to the to the actual folks that are living there a lot more money, that is, you know, temptation makes thieves. And it's just fair enough because everyone wants to live and survive and if they see an opportunity they go for it and then oh, don't we this, all absolutely yes and you know the approach that's there very much often that we have learned from the more let's say more money driven countries um like the uk like germany like america where there, where consumption and and sometimes in that sense being a prick is really the way to go yes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the pharmacy I lived I uh, worked in Germany the last one it was a massive center pharmacy and so many of our clients they were really oh my god you could have killed them but the problem was they always got a resolution for their shitty behavior they got what they wanted and yes. that's what that's how you make your clients then they just learn from that it's human beings and it's normal we, you know yes. But uh, in the sense of teaching teacher. them to be friendly and, and then you approach that. And that is what happens here in Portugal. If you start shouting at them, if you start being, you know, yeah, as pretending to be superior only because you're from a different culture, culture or you might have more money and you pretend to be more civilized or whatever, all this, they are like closing the door and they're like, yeah, whatever. And quite rightly so. Where's me Zay Pavinho when I need him? I think I might have got rid of that, but that's what you get, and that's what you should get. I think the old uh, Zay, Zay Pavinho, um, and it's quite. It's not necessarily going to be um, the Iberian slap. It's not necessarily going to be very vocal. I think people might be quite quiet in their response. Yeah, to, absolutely. And then not they want to. Yeah, that's I'm right. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and they're right. right. Go on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and Norwegians, let me tell you, not only does the sun shine from one till four in the afternoon, it's very hot. Um, a Sagresh Mini is about 80 cents. 
Now, in Norway, I think a pint of beer probably costs about 350 euros. Um, if you've got, a, if, if you've got, if you've, got, if you've got a Sagres Mini available to you for 80 cents, you're going to be drinking that between one and four in the afternoon, very possibly. I know that's what I'm going to be doing this afternoon. So, thank you for opening the batting, as it were, on this subject, Jenny B. Um, and because, you know, oh, sorry, you to say no, you carry on. Uh, but before you do. Can I just check if Netflix have been in touch with you about the new series about Jenny B when she was a pharmacist? Because I would watch that. I would watch that series. I think it could be as good as Breaking Bad about this the quiet frustration of Jenny B serving the German public in a pharmacy who come in, mm. get all cross and angry and ill, looking for a prescription, and you and you start talking to them about something. And that 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 could be such a good basis for a drama. Comedy drama, I think, with a, with that sort of northern European sense of humour about it, and a little bit of a thriller as well. People go missing, bodies are found. It's going to be great. We're going to be rich, Jenny. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Now the, the the sparkle button. Now we need sparkle. Yes, yes, button. Okay. Sparkle button. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, go on. You, you, you were going to say more, I think, about this. Yes, yeah, just to finish that, I yes. thought I'd love to say to avoid any of this anywhere in the world, in any situation, please just all remember to treat others like you want to be treated yourself. It's that easy. You're going to be hearing a lot of that this morning. Okay. Um, Jenny B is a pharmacist, so am I. I think she's a reformed pharmacist, right? Is that, yeah. That's how you or a lapsed, a lapsed pharmacist, like Catholics sometimes can be, <laughs> but not not quite as guilty about it. I don't know. I don't know. Let's not let's not get into that right now. We have lovely comments and chat and a lovely video, to, a very moving video. I want to share with you this morning as we unfold this conversation because. Um, I know there's another side to this, and us kind of more hippie-oriented people. Um, sometimes, I, 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 Pete, or if I don't, if I don't mention it, I'm sure Pete might bang on about it a little bit. Sometimes the hippies coming over here with their new ways of growing ve big vegetables or no vegetables, as often as it turns out, challenging the status quo of agriculture in Portugal. People have been growing things for millennia here. What? What? Why would permaculturists come over and tell them how to do it differently? That, to me, is a fantastic question, because sometimes in your new country, things aren't as, as what's the right way to language this? Because this is this is all part of it, isn't it? You don't want to be sounding judgmental because uh, that gets understandably. If you make people wrong, you're not having a good conversation. You're, you're having a terrible conversation, as it turns out. And people feel judged because they have been <laughs> basically. <laughs> And, and and this is this is going to be part of what we're talking about here, isn't it? Is how to share something which you might feel would be a good idea and a contribution, whilst respectfully understanding how people are going to be coming from where they're coming from, and then what is possible. And that, to me, is the beauty of the nations coming together in a new nation, in a new setting, right? And how do we manage that process? Because I, I don't think it's right to say. I'm not going to say anything about the things I'm passionate about in this new country because that might be seen as disrespectful. It's about how we do it. It's coming back to what the coach Turner was talking about this morning. It's technique, isn't it? It's how you go about doing that. So, I, I mean, we'd love to hear examples of how people have brought something with them from their own personality, from their own experience, from their own culture mm -hmm. and have, and, well, you know, we do hear about this in our in our community and sharing it with, with, with our, with our uh, hosts here and the host saying, actually, that's a pretty good idea. I'll have some more of that uh, or let's incorporate that. So let's let's keep the conversation going on that basis and see what people I imagine. There's a few greetings for you this morning here, Jenny. All right. Uh, this isn't a greeting for you. A uh, second mention of bums this morning. I was so bummed when I forgot to tune in last night. I really wanted to be there, but my calendar alerts didn't work and I forgot. Ah. Um, says James, and we don't record that one, James. Uh, suffice to say, uh, Hank and Connie were great fun, uh, and I'm sure we'll all be getting together socially as well at some point, and you can make up for it then. Um, that's right. Uh, I love the pronunciation of that one. Fantastic. Ooh, thank you, Porky. Pete, um, how many coffees have you had this morning? Um, Jim, bon dia, Carlito, and Jenny B from Foggy Porto this morning. Good morning to you, Jim. Oh, and Julian Bradley, who was in early uh, from Australia as well. Great to have you here. Ola Gumpas from Baldy Locks. Tony, who's going to be here, I think, next week uh, by my calculations. Bon dia, alegria, todos. De neblos, oi, con chuva in Portugal. So you've got some cloud and rain there in Pombal. Morning to you, Matty. 
um, a late <laughs> same there in Central. Um, are, are you quite close to your home, Jenny? Which which bit of Central are you in at the moment? Yeah, yeah, still quite close, about 20 minutes from home, so 40 minutes from Tomar. And we have the same. It's super foggy, super unnatural foggy. Uh, a bit of that. It's that moist that it actually rains. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I got that. Yes, we had that this morning, but that's because the shower head was pointed out beyond the shower curtain this morning. Um, <laughs> <of course. laughs> Long before anyone noticed. Uh, lazy Friday, no swimming or gym. Working Friday, Saturday, Sunday nights. Has somebody left a shower on upstairs, maybe, Jenny? That's could be what's going on there. Uh, gym tomorrow morning after nights is the plan there. Oh, here we go. Okay. That's... That's kind of better. Better. that's nearly better. <laughs> big big birthday weekend. Uh, why? Oh, okay, Mrs. Girls back. Happy birthday to you. Although we don't do that in Portugal, we'll wish you a uh, belated birthday. Best on Monday. Got one of those overnight bag plans for this evening. Fantastic. Then it's focus on kids party planning. Fantastic. Have a great weekend, Francis. Born from Samana to you. Uh, regarding here we go. Regarding adding value as an expat. How how are you? Uh, how are we already adding value, uh, possibly even unintentionally? Yes, well, let's not miss an opportunity to blow our own trumpets or each other's uh, here. But yes, well said, Jim. Have you got anything in mind? Um, while driving around yesterday, I saw a Festa de Cerveza, a poster in Alvazra. Could not stop to read the details to turn around. Any info about this, anybody? That must be very difficult. If you're a German and you drive past a beer festival poster and can't read the details. Aye! <laughs> I'm going to miss some beer. Okay, Matty, we'll do all we can to help you recover the forensically the information there. Oh, and Pam does this. Uh, you can add value by volunteering as Pam does. Thank you, Pam. That's and a great way to learn the language, as we've discussed with you. Fantastic. Wolfgang! I think Wolfgang's here because of you, Jenny. Uh, bon dia from Marina de la Gorge. So happy to be back. Wolfgang, Wust, great to have you here this morning. How are you doing? And uh, bon fin semana, todos, off to prepare for our three-day party and having 16 people over for dinner in three days. Okay, I think I've got that. Carl Thames Water, owned by Saudi Arabia and the United Arab, Arab Emirates, has a hosepipe ban starting today. Oh, okay. So they're sort of maybe um, replicating the conditions of Saudi. Um, so it's just to, as a show to their shareholders, possibly there. Oh, I didn't realise that. OK, well, sorry to hear that, you Londoners, my mother included there. I uh, hope that's not too bad for folks uh, there in, in, in droughty London, by the sound of it. I talk about my nearly five years of experience here. Two in the north and now three in the south. Thank you, Laura P. Um, to whoever needs info. So there you go, Laura P. Adding value that way. Sarah's in from Stubel as well. Morning, Sarah. How are you? Oh, yeah, I was saying this morning, Jenny. Look, uh, Mrs. M's got the Nag Champa blazing downstairs and she's singing Kirtan, putting more wow. feel good in Feel Good Friday. She says hello, by the way. Thank you. Kisses oh. and hugs to the lot of the mighty Munson Club. <laughs> little, little moment there. Well done, sir. Oh, I think that was that was me doing the arms for um for Coach Turner. You needed to be there for that. Hola, here she is. Connie's in. Hola, happy Friday. Connie, you were amazing last night. Um, I'm sure Hank says that to you very often. And Raphael as well. Hola, bon dia. Gomperos, gomperos as well. Um, Carl, what's this? You still owe us a three-hour show. To... Stop it. Uh, we'll see what we could do this morning. Did you enjoy that little bit of Phyllis Hyman there uh, earlier on, Chris? That was, I, was, I had you in mind with that. Adding value. Look at this from Pam. Join in with things. Look out for local events and projects you can join in with. Great for meeting people. Yep, so true. Uh, Connie, so bummed to have missed you and Hank last night. I really wanted to be there and then completely forgot. That was Mr. Darby. Look at this, Jenny. We've got Mr. Darby smelling the tomatoes here. Um, on the Good Morning Portugal show, within minutes of doing it, uh, they're on the screen uh, for everybody to see. Algarvian tomatoes. A few more comments then before I, I want to share this with you, Jenny. It's lovely performance, uh, spine-tingling performance of Marisa. Um, as it is uh, here in Ericeira, I meant to say, not sure what you mean there. Water um, was actually warm yesterday at Praia de Vol. That sounds lovely, Victoria. Not so in San Martino de Porto. Um, there was some shrinkage entering that water, I can tell you. Uh, maybe I'll swim this weekend, we shall see. Carl, when I was a lad, yes, get the violin out. I'm sorry to, I'm sorry I ever said when I was a lad. I will stop doing that. Um, there are loads of wild beaches here, being too many. That's the Algarve defence uh, again. 
Um, and uh, Connie, uh, that's right, Slick. Last night was fun. We relived our scouting trips and answered questions for others planning their trips to come here. It was fantastic. And uh, hola, bon dia. Faisal Dodia then from Chris. Keep on moving. Back in the 80s Camden Market, Old Street, under the car park. Karen, good vibes. Oh, Karen Wheeler on vocals, Town and Country Club in Kentish Town. Yes, happy days. Fantastic. Carl, the site looks normal. Oh, okay. So there's an update from the website, expatsportugal.com. The site looks normal. It was still wonky uh, late last night, but looks good now. That's good to know. Thank you very much for being tech support this morning and talking about buses. Flix bus have some good value trips. I heard of Leria to Lisbon for $2.99. Fantastic. And Tarlock, just quickly here. Oh, a few more hellos then. Uh, hello, sir. Portugal visa, sir. Come back Monday, Tarlock, Mr. Singh, uh, for that. And a bon dia from Stephen. Good morning to you, Stephen. Okay. Come back to all your lovely comments on this adding value as an expat. Jenny, may I share with you then a few pickies? You're going to be, you're going to be wondering why I'm showing you pictures of motorbikes. But Philomena sent us these. Um, these are motorbikes. Oh, a BMW. Look at that. Um, that that's a, a happy accident there that I'm showing you some fine engineering from Germany, an old BMW. But this is what they do at the expo in Cantoneda. There are rooms and rooms full of things being shown off, including beautiful motorbikes. Thank you, Philomena, for all of these. I, I was looking at that and thinking, I'm, I don't know if I would file through a room looking at motorbikes, but it's whatever floats your boat, isn't it? I mean, do you like motorbikes, Jenny? I actually had one. I actually built one. <laughs> Did you? I you have my own. Yeah, I bought like a super old, well, not super old, but it was, it had an engine problem that nobody could solve and a motocross bike. And I bought it and then I took it apart, like every little thing, every screw. Wow. Um, and I put it all back together myself. Only one thing was done by a factory. And that was afterwards the problem uh, where there was one mistake done. And I, yeah, I painted the frame. I, I put it all back together myself. It was a beast. Yeah, I wow. loved it. And yeah. did you sort out the problem by rebuilding it? Um, yeah, I did. Yeah, it was wow. perfect. Perfectly running. It was a real beast. Yeah. Okay, so cool. roll reversal then. I think you were quite interested in the BMWs there and the pretty bikes. Me well, on the other hand, I'm going to go for the dolls houses myself. Oh, I love fairy houses, but yeah, that was, that was I was much younger and I I love the motocross. You know, now now I I wouldn't blow all the fumes out in the beautiful forest anymore, but uh, <laughs> I'd rather go with the mountain bike. But I loved it, man. I was yeah. Just and I was just running around with his motorbike. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's part. Of, that's gonna. That's gotta be part of the Netflix script as well. You, you, mm. you're gonna have a really big bike in this program in this show. <laughs> okay. Um. So we go from one hall of motorbikes at Cantoneda to a hall full of dolls' houses, fairy houses. I think. Oh wow! Are these pretty as well? Thank you, Philomena, for all of these. Uh, house on stilts. They're lovingly made and then displayed here. Love it. And there are some great YouTube videos now, aren't there, of people building things with this sort of level of intricacy and taking you through the process. Our family sit and watch them. They're really amazing with hilarious commentaries sometimes and special effects. But thank you, Philomena. A hall of dolls' houses, fairy houses, miniatures and motorbikes. And then she sent us some footage of Marisa. Now, Marisa is saying hello to a few fans. Uh, go through this with us, um, everybody. Look at this Marisa coming onto the stage. And she's so majestic and graceful she's got such presence and eventually she starts singing and um if you are not moved by her, her singing um we've got therapists standing by to restart your chakras <laughs> okay all right check this it's three minutes i'm not going to play the whole three minutes but bear with us for a couple of minutes on that it's, it's thoroughly worth it so over to you Molly. <laughs>
Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> I mean, my, talk about your shack, heart chakra being blown apart there, Jenny. What happened there? And you know what? I even started crying before she got on stage when she uh, welcomed these people down there. You know, uh, usually the handicapped people are in the first row. And that lady that was only able to move her mouth or her head. The beautiful thing with music is it doesn't matter. It will still go deep down in all of your cells. And it's beautiful because she can still touch these people on such a deep level. And she has respect for that. And it's amazing. Thank you for sharing this. She hasn't even started, had she? She was, she, you know, no. sometimes you, your artists will do their performance and then, okay, well, <laughs> better go and see a few people by the stage door. I'm knackered, but I've got to go and sign a few autographs. Et cetera. She hadn't even started her show there. So she's walking through saying hello to everybody. And she, she to me, she looked like, like you said, genuinely connecting with people. Yeah. Like she, it didn't matter that she, she's just about to play a gig. But she was taking her time uh, and making sure that people were 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 met. And yeah. then she gets on the stage and opens her mouth like that. I was like, mm. oh my god! And I could see you on the screen. Like both of us, like wow, I was blown. Yeah. I, I, I saw it before this morning already when I was looking at it before. But for a second time, that was amazing. So there you go, Marisa, uh, a great. Oh my god, a uh, Fado legend. Um, there's something about that music, isn't there? My god, does that wonder how everybody else did? <laughs> Ooh. dealt with that on the show this morning. I wasn't expecting that. Uh, so touching. Wow, says Jim. Mm. Uh, my goodness. Um, and Oh, what a great moment for T-Duck to re-enter as well. Bon dia, amigos. I've been under the weather this week. I'm usually asleep at this hour. I'm feeling better and just had to pop in for you. I'm so glad you did. Um, to see Marisa there, I hope that um, tickled every chakra of your body there in a good way, um, T-Duck. Was, wasn't that amazing? But I think you and me are starting each other off here, Jenny. Um, <laughs> it's so, not getting better, God. Stop it now. Okay, okay, seriously, today is International Beer Day. That's better. Uh, I, I need to ground myself with some foamy, hoppy liquid, I think. Uh, that was quite something. Uh, hiya, Jenny B. Lovely to see your smiling face. Um, and I think when when YouTube see that or when their machines see it, they will say, uh-uh, you can't be sharing music like that. And I'll only be able to share the muted version of it. So there you were, able to see that live on the show this morning. And Philomena, thank you so much. I th if it was me holding that camera, I think I might have lost it and not, not been able to video that. Um, but that was very, very powerful there. Um, Bob and Karen are watching as well this morning. Lovely to see you, the Yonkers, this morning. Hope you enjoyed that too. I suspect you were moved by that. Um, adjust oh, so back to the adding value as an expat. Adjusting to another country is both an external and internal journey. Um, Jenny, are we in a fit state now to talk about this or not? Or do we just need to go and, I don't know, cry some more into some tissues <laughs> and light a joystick and sit quietly for a little while? Oh, that, you know, you told me once that even though we, we've been broken, breaking this uh, also uh, here in the show, that this is actually a no-go for a show to have this silence. But we had this. We had, we had it all. We, we, we had it all. Breaking the rules. Mind, yeah. Everything. But, you know, with, with adding value, I thought this morning that I really, you know, like no show is – is anything without the audience. So we are, I believe we can both say that so glad for all of the people who are here and tuning in and supporting all of this and sharing their comments and adding their value. Yeah. Um, and yeah. only speaking about this little bubble of the show. And uh, what I'd like to know is how do we add value to your day Ooh. with this show? Maybe you can share this. And in the meantime, while we're waiting for this, I'd love to show you my new calendar. <laughs> oh, this caused quite... Hold on, let me just give you the full screen, because this caused quite a stir, didn't it? Um, no, I because I'll oh. tell you now why I bring it in now. Because it adds value to yeah. your life and... Because I wanted to really make sure the light is really shit. But I send you pictures on WhatsApp. Maybe you can, maybe you can share them. Okay, I will, I will, I will. When, when, I, when I can find us. Now, when I say these caused a stir last time, there was a feeding frenzy, wasn't there? Um, because last year's diary um, ah. was Kate was published fairly late in the yes. uh, in in the in the year, wasn't it? 
And so I think you're a bit you're a bit ahead of the game, aren't you? And people would, I want one of those. I want, how do I get one of those? And this is what we had at the end of last year, wasn't it? People wanting yeah. them from all over the world. So it, it, you're very thoughtfully making this happen in August so people can be ahead of the game here. And I will bring some more pickies. Um, did, did you say WhatsApp was where you, where you sent those? Yeah, WhatsApp Messenger. I bombarded you with the pictures. Did you? Oh, I see. Yeah. Yes, you did. Okay. Well, whilst we're whilst we're talking, I will uh, bring those to the screen so that people can definitely get their. Uh, pl it's not so, it's not just a diary, is it? It's more of a planner no. and a pro. So, okay, tell us how it works then. Well, first, why I bring it up now with speaking about adding value. Um, yeah. It was really important for me. I work with a local graphic studio here. She's lovely. It's a family business, just like mine. <laughs> so uh, I really love to support them. And if you want to support two local family businesses, mine and theirs, uh, feel free to add this value to your life. Because like Carl is saying, it's not just a diary. It's got like, it's full of colors. It's basically my energy for you every day in the next year. And that is something priceless, really. And also it reminds you every day to do something for yourself because we have this 10 minutes of well-being, feelings today, and Jim will love this, my act of kindness. Because that is something how we also add value to our own life if we just give others a smile, a hug, offer some volunteering, all that. So there's that. Yeah, you will not. Yeah, yeah, maybe you can see a little oh, bit. Oh, so oh, that's full screen, full screen. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, Just run us through that page. Yeah, so that's that's the uh, 10 minutes of well-being. That's the feelings today, just briefly. I used to do them when I was 14 or something. I started just three yeah. bullet points. How was my feelings today? And the act of kindness, because it's interesting, you know, to see all that. And then, of course, we have all the beautiful funky yes. colored pages we have reflection great. This, you say this is a local graphic designer so this is a great example isn't oh, it yeah. sorry i do all the graphic designing but she does the printing uh, okay okay all right so you you you're, you've you've designed all of this as well as put, put the content all together my goodness, all of it it's all jenny's spirit <laughs> Poured into a, a single publication for 2023. There you go. So the new diary uh, there. And there, yeah, there's the there's the screenshot of what Jenny was just showing you uh, with the, the, the lovely images and ideas and concepts coming together. Oh, early bird discounts as well. But a bit of uh, Jenny B merch this morning with a discount on it as well. T-shirts too. Yes, look, finally, they're printed. Oh, I don't know if you can I see, see. This. Okay, very nice. What does it say on there? It's not, it's if so nice. Not to give a fuck. Oh. Ah. Well, thank, you. thank you for that. There's so many reasons well, why, why YouTube actually, didn't get a hard time this morning. <laughs> but actually, I made the, the, the friendly version of it. Wait, you can do your own lighting now with your phone. <laughs> so light, if you've just tuned in, um, the reason why... That's my I have, Yes. I, I, this is just <laughs> so awkward now, Jenny. Yeah. <laughs> I don't put it all on the picture. <laughs> <laughs> I Luckily, like they're not too big, though. If the equal ops, I'm going to do the same. So there's <laughs> no suggestion of it. Maybe I should have given you the T-shirt yeah, to wear it. That would be yes, less awesome. Yes, that could. No, I think people would much rather you did it than me. Uh, and look at this. So T-shirt. See, so your, your T-shirt's only 17 euros. Yes, but it's, that's the early bird discount. So if you okay. order till the 31st in the bundle... You can yeah. choose, if you go back to the last picture, you can choose uh -huh. out of one of these three designs. So you know the piece begins with me, that we have had lots in the show. Yeah. You know that I keep praying that love yourself is really the key. Or if you really, you know, enjoy not giving a beep, then you can go for this one. Yes. Yeah, that was good, eh? I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, if you order till the till the end of August, you get the early bird discount uh, for 50 euros for the both of it. And I have a super expat Portugal special. If you, you. Uh, send me the email with yep. expats early bird, then you will also receive the wonderful wooden holy healthy pencil. Yeah. 
You get the pencil as well. Okay, oh, this please. is fantastic. Okay, so a special for the, for the community here. Thank you for making that possible. Uh, Jenny B, you need to put that email address then where your name is. Rename yourself on the screen, if you will, um, including oh. your email address. Whilst right, you people who like QR codes, scan now. Oh. Is that gonna is that gonna take people straight to your sites where they can make the order? Is that right as well? With the, with the no, QR? that's. Uh, wait, wait, how can I speak? That's, I also have a, a spread shop now, Funky Fashion by Holy Healthy. Yes. Where, so for the, for the deal with the calendar now and to support the locally printed stuff, because the T-shirts are also from the same graphic uh, studio okay. that does the, my design, but she does the printing. And they are from there, the T-shirts uh, and the cotton is from Spain. Um, so it's all as local as possible. And if you'd like to support oh, that, enough. please order through there. But if you like to have a different design or a different uh, kind of T-shirt, whatever, there's lots of that to be found on the new spread shop, Funky Fashion by Holy Healthy. And that's the oh, yeah. QR give us, code. Give us some, yeah, give us a, okay, give it, uh, and I'll put that up at the end of the show again, okay? So you people who like QR codes and need to order in the United States probably, um with spreadshirt um i will put that up at the end of the show um i love this jenny i think your prices are very reasonable you know for a t-shirt is it is it normally 20 euros yeah for, the t-shirt is normally 20 euros that's the other thing like if you would like to support us it's actually cheaper to order like this um, yeah. and then through the spread shop even though yes. Um, the spread shop is based in UK, so for all the people who have the Brexit shipping issues, I oh, counted yes. it out roughly, but even then it's still cheaper to support us here locally. Um, but like I said, it's limited design, so you have that kind of t-shirt or you have a tank top for the ladies, that's a bit ladies. more... Yes, okay. yes, but I it wasn't that. ready for today. But well, I know <laughs> so, it says uh, feminine fit, tank top side seems... Uh, T-shirt with no side seams, soft touch, yeah. made in Spain, 100% cotton. Very good. And I think that's a bargain um, at that price. And your diary there, 431 pages, colorful inspiration, reflection pages, uh, locally manufactured. I love that, that you're you're doing that with a Portuguese manufacturer. Good, good stuff. Fantastic. So there you go. There's the Jenny B merch, everybody. Um <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool, really. Ready in it. August. Ready in August uh, for when, you. When the when the uh, lady she passed it on to me and her dad, like I said, it's a family second second generation family business. And and then he was looking at her and he said something in Portuguese. And I was like, what did he say? And he said, uh, it's like a kid receiving its toy. And I'm like, yeah, it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's so brilliant. Uh, you never picked out Crianza, I think, in that phrase there. Okay. All right. This is wonderful. Uh, thank you very much, Jenny, for introducing. We'll come back. Well, I'll show you, I'll show everybody those again before the end of the show. We've got so many uh, comments, I think, uh, relating to our theme here. Um, how do we add value as expats? Uh, Jenny's showing you how they're working with local producer, um, a local printer. That's fantastic. Um, nothing when it comes to uh, adding value for Jim. He's there. He's 10 out of 10. He just needs another espresso this morning. You're in a good place for that in Porto, aren't you there? Um, Vati, I was laughing. The Germans, Fata and Fati. Um, you, as you can see, it has no F or R like Fati. That makes you giggle. It does make me giggle. Uh, am I wrong to be giggling at that when a German child might shout out, Fati, Fati, Fati? <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, when I'm mindful, take time to notice. I always choose 10 on the how I am scale. Superb. Thank you very much, James. <laughs> yes, there's nothing we can do for you this morning. Um, Phyllis Simon, you know how to love me. If classic floor filler, Phyllis made way for Whitney Houston. Best rendition of You Know How to Love Me is by Ian Wright. Sing along. Not a football player, surely. Um, or is it? Maybe it is. Um, Bondia Jenny from Brian. Gooden Morgan. Oh, we're going back here. Gooden Morgan Jenny. Why so dark? And only in the terms of lighting, not in terms of personality there. I think. Because I can't find the light switch here. <laughs> there you go. Simple <laughs> solution. Um, I, yeah. Uh, what else did you expect, uh, Matty? I love Feel Good Fridays with Jenny, says James. <laughs> Jenny, you can always come over to Bombay and use my Mayo Internet. There's no need to rub it in, but that's a nice offer. Thank you very much. Uh, morning, Carl and Jenny and all. Fiona, good morning to you. 
got to an angry face from Fiona. I wonder why she put that in earlier on. Sometimes when I say to people, why have you pressed the angry emoji? They say, oh, because I couldn't find my glasses and I thought I was pressing the love emoji. That can change the course of history, that kind of um, <laughs> mispress of a button. Um, Carl, if you really want to know what is going on for someone, rather than how are you feeling, ask what are you feeling? Or what sensation are you feeling? Very good intervention. Appreciate that, Stephen. Okay, fine. Uh, don't work as answers to that. Yes, well said, sir. Very good. Uh, Jenny Bay from uh, Francis. Who's having going to have a lovely weekend this weekend and a lovely birthday weekend with Mrs. Girls back there. Mark Cockerton, who's always here when you're here. Love and hugs. Jenny Kins. Mark, you know where you can get your diary uh, now. Uh, welcome, Jenny B from Jim. Your enthusiasm is lighting up my weekend. And look who else is here. Uncle Krusty. Oh, hey, hello, Carla Jenny. Great to be with the Sunshine Soul Siblings. Greetings from München where they are at the moment oh wow okay um traveling around europe love to you both thank you very much uncle crusty for being here and marketing call from nosh yesterday I told them off for removing bbc news and bbc entertainment the guy didn't even know what channels they have pa nosh um there you go but they didn't wait make i bet they wish they didn't make that call yesterday uh bondi Toros from antonio fitting in is overrated yes your your uh, that was your um, confession this morning that you've never really fitted in, Jenny. And we found that so hard to believe. Um, but thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, and of course, it's overrated. But there's a place for it. I mean, that's why we do it, isn't it? I mean, there's a security and a safety in fitting in, uh, which can be very good for us. But uh, sometimes it can be harmful for us as well. Yeah. 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 Okay. More, more, more than for me in my experience. But, you know, it's that adaptation that we learn so quick and again um a lot of that i've been exposed to in the pharmacy where then at some point it clashes so your body is telling you uh -uh, that's not oh, the way yeah. to go and it starts to have all the symptoms and then you come and see me and i go like oh maybe you need to listen and then sooner or later we all we all um exposed to that or oh, yeah and then it's about choosing yes well, this thing, um, I've been noticing it a lot myself recently. Um, I think very early on in my life, I had a, a, a habit of uh, in anticipating going to school, just having this knot in the pit of my stomach, mm -hmm. which has been there most of my life. And um, it, it was only probably halfway through my life where I thought this idea that you're talking about, you know, that your body is a barometer. And it's actually sending you this information for a reason. <laughs> It's not just, it's not like, well, of course you've got a bellyache. You're going to school. What do you expect? Of course you've got a bellyache. You're going to work. What do you expect? Of course you've got a bellyache. You're stood on a platform with hundreds of other people going to similar fates, none of whom are really enjoying it. Of course you've yeah. got. And then you come to a point that you, well, okay, um, maybe there's something a little bit more nuanced going on here. And my body is saying to me, don't really want to be here. <laughs> Can we do yeah. something else today? <laughs> and, and also... What you were saying there with the stomach, eh? yeah. It's also it's so interesting how much energy we we def we we hold here in this area, yes. and how much you can release of that through your voice, like oh. Marisa does in her. Yes. Series. Oh my word. Well, I have sung all my life, whether people liked it or not. I was doing it yesterday, and I got I was singing so much yesterday that that Mrs. M, we got my in laws over, so I think she's thinking a bit. God, I wonder what my mum and dad think of Carl now they've got to, now they've been staying for two weeks and he's singing his, his little heart out in the office. And they you must have everything. What the hell does he do for a living? The guy has just sat there singing with headphones on. What the is it? Is my daughter? Uh, is our daughter safe with this maniac? <laughs> the, we but, should yeah. uh, we should record an album because I sing probably just as shit as you do, but it comes from the heart. None, none taken. <laughs> okay, <laughs> All right. <laughs> yes okay so if you actually sing good i don't but i love to do it and it's okay. really sick. heartfelt <laughs> and therapeutic is the name of the album heartfelt from the <laughs> from the belly therapeutic singing with jenny b and carl munson no one's gonna buy it but we're gonna have a lot of fun making it exactly <laughs> and we add value <laughs> there you go all right holly healthy at pm.me for the early bird special you can see that on the screen now and i'll also put the qr code very progressive using a qr code look at you at the cutting edge uh, living a what might be called a rustic and natural life in the woods and yet using a qr code at the same time you're such a wonderful 
blend of contradictions, Jenny B. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, where are where do we get to? Good day, mate. Um, there from Jim to Antonio. I still I think I think we're some way back. I think we get yet to get to more uh, Marisa comments. Um, planning to go up north in the next week to Braga. We'd like to drop by you two as well, bringing Hank the Stroop Waffles uh, this time for him. There you go. So Stroop Waffles on the move around Portugal. Adjusting to another's country is both an external. Uh, we've got that. That is great. Jenny, yes, lapsed pharmacist. Oh, the Stroop Waffles. Oh, cool. Let us know when you'll be passing through. Yum, Stroop Waffles. Um, in Porto, Bon dia, Jenny and Carl from Bob Yonker. Yes, marvelous. And yes, Karen and Bob are watching. I think we're coming up to date now. Simply put, the love you give is the love you get. So there it is. That's nailed it for expats, foreigners, and immigrants. Be loving, right? Just just act out of love where you go, and you, and you probably can't go far wrong. Portuguese lesson today. Okay, very good. Two very similar words that even the natives mistake. Uh, Le Lazer. Laser, a leisure. So laser and laser. Uh, the difference between is how you say the A and the E. So laser and laser or laser. Uh, I think we need a little bit of a voice note. Maybe send that through on WhatsApp on how to say that, if you would, Antonio, and we'll play that. But thank you. Laz uh, I've seen that, the leisure park, Lazer, there. Thank you very much, uh, Antonio. Uh, bon fin semana to you. Now playing on Netflix from pharmacy to farm aid journey. <laughs> Sorry, from pharmacy to farm, a journey of recovery. This has got legs. This has got legs, isn't it? The story of a, a lapsed pharmacist, a reformed pharmacist. Mm -hmm. Somebody got very cross with me for calling you a reformed pharmacist. It's not a judgment about anyone who's a pharmacist. It's just describing Jenny's own story here, okay? Treat others the way you wish to be treated unless you're a pharmacist. No, unless you're a masochist. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, James. Thank you for that. Uh, treat others as they want to be treated. There you go. Well, yeah, that's true. Uh, you've just been talking about people having different values. Yes, yeah, so maybe treat... Uh, th there's a, a lovely nuance as well. Full of the nuance this morning, Stephen, and excellent interventions. Thanks, mate. Uh, I aspire to be a reform. You guys could start a, a, a some kind of... A, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a thing. It's a thing. Come with me, brothers and sisters, <laughs> to the promised land. Excellent. It's a, it's a cult. Bon dia, Griezen. Hey, from Johnny. How are you? Um, inspire by example. Yes, well said, Uncle Krusty, because we know Uncle Krusty and Claudia do that, don't they? De la Burka, nom de plume. Bon dia, Griezen. It's still last night here. Huh? Um, you're living in the past. <laughs> Just my med come into the present with us, Della Berka. I've just finished my meditation. Well done. Uh, good. Well, how do you feel out of 10 after that? Um, I think that's a tricky lesson without audio, unless you trust Carl to give it a go, which nobody should nobody should do that, Pam, should they? You know how that happens here. Um, I'm still being corrected every morning. Uh, bon dia d'Australia from Drew. Morning, Drew. And William Ruffing is here too. Drew and William. Oi, Carl. I stu aqui no Porto novamente. Newly moved then, William, to Porto. Well done, mate. Uh, that's great news. No way, Pam. Carl would make it even more. Okay, all right. Doing my best here. Um, love what you love and let folks know you love it. Just don't. Ah, oh, here's a good. What do you make of this then, Jenny? That's the job of religious extremism. So, yeah, just kind of wear the t shirt, but don't go on about it. <laughs> <laughs> possibly there thank you but that's but but you 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 see this is one thing i wanted to talk about with this you, you're going to make mistakes aren't you as well because you, you just don't know how your message is going to land always but if you if you stick around to clear up the mess then we're in business aren't we so i think this happens in the messy in the messy business of human communication stick around to clear up the mess but you know of course it's always like we said treat others as you'd like to be treated I don't believe in treat them as they would like to be treated because that's not my business. I, I don't know how they would like to be treated. I only know how I'd like to be treated. And if that matches, fine. And if not, okay. Because, you know, yeah, sorry. And that's exactly what I mean with this. You can wear this message and you can live the message just like exactly that. Love what you love and let folks know you love it. And that's yeah. all you can do. And yeah. it, it doesn't fit anyone and that's okay. It doesn't yeah. fit everyone. And that's okay. But at least you should not let anyone dull your sparkle in that sense. 
only because they don't like what you're doing. That's fine. We're all different. We all have different tastes, but that shall not let you hold you off from whatever you like and whatever you love and continue doing that. You know, the calendar, for example, the T-shirts, for example, maybe nine people out of 10 think, oh my God, that fucking reformed lunatic hippie in the woods there, whatever. Yeah. I don't care. I'm really over that point. I'm here now. In that sense, because that's fine. I might not agree with what you're doing, but I'll leave you to it. If you're happy with that, that's fine for me. And that is something that we should all learn more, less judgment, more mutual respect for wherever we are in the world in, in, and in our own journey. Because at the end, that's the only thing you can give to one another, the love and the respect, even though you don't agree with what they're doing, but still have the compassion for that's their journey. And that's fine. Oh, well said, Jenny. And this this pains me about my American brothers and sisters. I have to say um, that. Well, let, let's. Do, I, I want to do a, a bit of a, a, a sort of compare and contrast. Not in a not in a way that it is better than or worse than, but just an observation. Uh, this is what the, I think. This is what we can say we love about Portuguese people a lot of the time. And mm. uh, these are generalizations we're talking about because you can only do that when you're talking about a whole nation. But the the thing you just said about um, mutual respect, I find that a lot in Portugal. I find that people can do do think that oh that reformed hippie whatever, and it's like okay fair enough live and let live, and it's a really good atmosphere in which to be yourself and have other people go okay, <laughs> and like move on. Uh, to me that that is a really big part of my experience in Portugal is Portuguese people, and but when I say Portuguese people, there are a lot of immigrants here and, and, and the Portuguese, the whole Portuguese experience of people, Portuguese people moving away, the people from the, the Portuguese colonies coming here, this whole sort of um, phenomenon we're talking about does seem to create quite an accepting and non-judgmental atmosphere, generally speaking. I mean, I know there are notable exceptions. Obviously there are because there's human beings involved and there are extremes, but generally speaking, People are like you know, the old guys down the cafe might see your t shirt and just go, hmm, okay, <laughs> like be and be fine about it. It's 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 like about being fine, isn't it? About what you're not fine about in, in, in so many ways. And I, I have found that all over this country and in this culture is people might, might not get it and they don't really care that they don't get it and they just move on and it's not a problem. And on the other hand, I mean, it's, I saw, saw what I thought, felt was quite a sad message um, on our um, expats um, Portugal uh, YouTube channel about, you know, somebody saying, I'm really concerned that the, the, the political people they don't like are coming to put, are there many of those people in Portugal, are the, and are they going to kind of basically ruin my life by being there? People who, whose politics I don't agree with, and this person really meant it. I don't mean it. I don't, I'm not looking down on them and what they're saying. It just struck me as quite a sad snapshot of where some people have got to with that. That they're actually trying to move away from people they disagree with, um, and I understand the backdrop of that. I really do, um, but it's a sad situation, isn't it? Where where that the thing you talked about is not happening anymore in some parts of the world where people can't coexist and just be okay about having different ideas to each other so i think that that's transferable that's what we're talking about this morning isn't it you know how to be how to be a a good fit expat immigrant foreigner uh, all the things we're talking about this morning you are coming into a culture that is very accepting i think generally speaking and so let's respect and enjoy that as well sorry jenny you, I've, I've been whittling on quite a lot there no, all good. I loved it because you're so right. And I remember, and I'm, I'd like to add that sometimes with that, you can also be inspiring, you know, because if I see on so many levels, for example, uh, the non-judgment, there's a beautiful example I'd like to share because in Portugal, really, at least down here in the countryside where I am, people not judge whatsoever. You can go in, in like the... the if I go, sometimes the way I go out to do shopping here, if I would just step in front of the door like this in Germany, people would call probably the ambulance uh, of the mental ill home. 
Yes. Uh, but I remember once I was at the at the vets uh, and I had just before I had a walk, a therapy walk with the kid and we picked the flower and I put it here on my forehead behind my head. And I remember I didn't notice, but I was there with it like all the time and the flower was already completely hanging down. And then later on, after the vets and the whole lot, I went through, I looked in the mirror and I was like, oh, I had this flower hanging down here the whole time. And nobody even looked strange at me. It was completely okay. Perfect, perfect. And yeah. The other day when I was in the restaurant, uh, I got my, I treated myself to a vegetarian pizza. That was lovely. And there was this, there was this, uh, this, this old Portuguese guy. And you know, they and vegetarian, they love their pork and their meat and the whole lot. But he looked at me and he looked at my friend and he looked at me and he was like, I'm going to go for the vegetarian pizza. And then he was so proud walking out with this vegetarian pizza. And it's these little things, you know. I see my neighbors constantly looking a bit weird, but also a bit um, impressed by the fact how I deal with my dogs and that I actually have fun with them without having any lead or anything like that. And they are like, ah, so this is also how it can be. You don't need to have them on the chain, you know? So opening all these possibilities and what you were saying with, uh, in the example of uh, um, sometimes you, with the permaculture bit, um, sometimes you're trying to uh, reform the world where you step into with all the things that you believe have been working so well in your world. Yes. but. Even I'm not religious, but even thinking about the story of Jesus, he did he didn't told anyone how to do it. He just did it. And yes. either you follow or you don't. And like yes. you said, there is there is power and knowledge in everything. So they have been doing this for years because they know the best way how to work with their environment. That they yes. still spray Roundup, it's a different story. <laughs> that you know, that's a complete different story. But yes. it, again, if you and and this is just a human being thing. If you go there and say, you, 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 that's not good. Huh? It's not going to do anything. Not going to work. By it. example, lead by example, inspire by doing that, just like Krusty was saying, and so many others. Thank you for adding all of this. Well, and, let's, let's conclude with all these lovely yeah. comments. In, uh, Please. Jenny. Fantastic this morning. Well done, everybody. Really appreciate it. Found this channel, says uh, Julian, researching how to move to Portugal, hoping to make the jump in two years. Loving the energy of the show. Thanks, Julian. Thank you for that feedback. Lovely to have you here. Welcome from James. Happy you're here. Be sure to watch on Mondays. The focus is on making the move. Fantastic. St. Catherine is here. Bon dia, uh, de Carl. Your amigos. And to you as well, Jenny. I'm going to extend that. Um, and I'm going to ignore the at uh, comments now because we need to get through to got two minutes to go till 10 we might go over a little bit chris for you especially um yeah international day of beer today i mean isn't it every day really in some ways but anyway thank you for that i will i will take that at face value and enjoy it thank you very much pam um and owe you one for that uh one way to potential potentially contribute is to notice any angry reaction or temptations to judge and stopping. It's not easy, but noticing. It's all about the noticing, James, isn't it? Um, no replay. No, I'm sorry. It was in the moment. We don't do that on a first Thursday. Hi, Jenny B from Victoria. Lovely to see your smiling face. And um, where was the motorcycle show? That's Cantaneda. Uh, there you go. And the hero, the hero, heroine always rides a bike. Okay, so the treatment of the Netflix series is definitely got to have a great big throbbing bike in there. and Or, or a horse um, in the organic version. Uh, when I moved to Alcabasa, it was difficult to find out about events. I'm someone who needs to know what's going on. So I find found out, created a group to share this info, and originally aimed at foreigners. Same here, Pamela. I'm doing that in San Martino de Porto. Very good. Um, and that's adding a bit of value, isn't it? Living here, uh, but know some Portuguese people find it useful too, uh, that guide. Isn't that lovely? So a lovely bit of uh, added value there from Pam as an expat. Uh, yes, well, it was Cantoneda. Thank you, Antonio, for that. Um, I went to see Marisa many years ago in Manchester. She is amazing. Yeah, we were very moved by that. Um, Antonio, thank you. It's Expo Fakik uh, 2022, and it's open until August the 7th. So this is the concluding weekend of that. Speaking of Manchester, which we were, if anyone is interested, the TV show Portuguese no Mundo about Portuguese people who have moved abroad is from there on Saturday night on RTP1, I think. Well done. Um, and Marisa performed on the 3rd of August at Expo Fakik uh, 2022. There are more shows today, tomorrow, and on the 7th. Oh, and Jutosh i Pontapsh are there as well, the Rolling Stones, folks. This is a big do, isn't it, Expo Fakik? Fantastic. 
Uh, and uh, great to see you here, T-Duck. Marisa seems great. She's included in Lisbon's Fado Museum. My old lady got a kick out of the brothel dollhouse displayed there from the good old days of Fado. So there's another F there. I thought it was football, uh, Fado and Fatima. There's apparently another one, Ubi. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, four Fs. Uh, Marisa, beautiful. Uh, wonderful. Thank you, uh, Deagle, for that. Unknowingly. Um, I've been adding value to Portugal by allowing the native Portuguese speakers to practice their English speaking with me. Here, I thought I was inconveniencing them. Inconveniencing them. Go figure. Good job. Well done, James. Small act of kindness. Have conversations that are generative, that move life forward. That's nice, isn't it? Um, wonderful, Jim. And yeah, it, it calls for a little bit of self-consciousness, doesn't it? Uh, and a bon dia from Uncle Krusty. Jenny, Carl will be banned. <laughs> Morning from Manuel in the UK. Hello, mate. How you doing? Hola, bon dia. A reflection from Jim. At the end of the day, do people want to stay in your presence? Are they neutral or do they want to run away? That's a bit sobering, isn't it? <laughs> Yikes. Uh, but thank you, Jim, uh, nonetheless, for that. Um, and uh, hello, Uncle Krusty. Uh, settling in Tomar. We are loving the cool, misty mornings of Tomar. Guten Morgen, lieber Jenny B. Bin erst jetzt da. Hoffentlich schaffe ich es noch deine Show zu genießen. Yes, of course. Um, a question I've often wondered um, and forgotten to ask. Does Jenny have a child, children? Another is how is the project for children going? Um, with, with minus two minutes to go then, uh, any kids? And how is the project for kids going, Jenny? Uh, well, with minus two minutes, I'm not sure if I can wrap this all up, but I was planning anyway to, um, how do you say that, to honor the next show into a Rainbow Guardians update and the whole lot. And I'm, I'm happy to answer all these questions then. How's that sound, Fiona? There you go. All right. Uh, thank you, Jenny. Uh, where do we get the book and T-shirt deal from Jenny B? Right there. Email that address there and I'll put the QR code at the end. I uh, definitely don't mean to put an angry emoji. I was just probably shifting the phone. Sorry, folks. Yeah, Fiona. Um, and, and it's what my attention, it's human nature, isn't it? My attention goes straight there. There's a love heart next to him. I'm thinking, why is that person angry with me in my show? Uh, so stop it. Um, is your authenticity, if, you're, if your authenticity annoys someone else, they're probably not meant for you. And it's their issue to deal with, not yours. Uh, James says, uh, look up Florence Foster. Oh, okay. That's not an, an that's not an, a command to Florence Foster, who's watching. It's look up Florence Foster, um, as in research her. She sang the Met in New York, had a horrible voice, and sold the most records ever of any Met performance. Carl and Jenny go forward and sing together. Okay, um, it'll be a spin-off from the Netflix series. Just catching up in the comments. Bon dia todos from Cindy. GMP is adding value. <laughs> yes, get one of those, Cindy. Yeah. Um, by creating conversations that create awareness of how to be in Portugal. Yes, thank you very much, Jim. Um, and you are not responsible for versions of you that live in the mind of others. Well said, T Duck, as well. Isn't this great? T Duck, glad you're feeling better. We all are. Um, I, I, maybe we'll have you back with your, with your deep thoughts and your dad jokes on Monday there, T Duck. Fingers crossed. Take it easy, my, my friend get well soon uh, well i wouldn't say do it that way but i'm not them and they're not me want to share a beer together um that's that's the international uh, icebreaker um, a cold beer um, break the ice put it in the beer have a nice beer together fantastic on this the international day of beer florence foster jenkins sang at carnegie hall but the point made remains the same thank you portugal to me seems safe sane and civil so nice let's keep it that way let's keep contributing to that good gumbers follow that like button excuse me for this heartfelt inclusive show the little things can be like pebbles in a pond mm. how lovely influence by example yes same here with the portuguese looking at my dogs and how they behave even the vet at the dog community dog shelter was impressed after she overcame her fear <laughs> of matty's dog there uh okay we got that thank you della uh thank you so much uh jenny and carlito We've got someone revving up a motorbike it's, all, it's like we're already making that series with you in it. You come through the window on a motorbike, Jenny, in the opening scene. Um, thanks for such wonderful energy, positive ideas and suggestions. We're off to meet some friends at a cafe. Cheers, Bob. Man Cave tonight, everybody. Uh, main Community Festival kicks off this weekend in Belfast. If you're over that part of Europe, 300,000 over that way. Thank you very much, everybody. It's been amazing, Jenny. Last word to you then, uh, and I will put your QR code at the end. Great show, guys. Lurking, but listening good and proper. Okay, over to you, Jenny.
skip the QR code, but put the other pictures on, please. Okay, well, at the um, end of the show. And I just want to thank everyone because you also add to my life, uh, add value to my life by having me in the show every month again and just letting me be me. Oh, and uh, yeah, thank you so much. On that note, bon fin semana. Thank you for being here this morning and crying and laughing with me, Jenny, the whole range um, uh, this morning. And uh, have a great weekend, everybody. Bon fin semana. And uh, uh, te prossima. See you on Monday, on the segunda there. Take care and bye for now. Have a nice little whistle. Maybe sing if you want to. Don't care. It doesn't matter. Get the t shirt. Bye for now. Ciao, ciao. <laughs>